the National Broadcasting Company presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. These counter spy reports to the American people are brought to you each week at this time. Now, the case of the invisible insurrectionist. Maria, the baby is crying again. Oh, see, si. she does not sleep. And the doctor says it is sleep that she needs. I know, Maria. It is no good for her here in the city of New York. It is no good here for all of us, Juan. We should go back to Puerto Rico. We will go back soon, Maria. Now, please try to make her stop. Please, my Maria. See, si. I will try. Salinas, my friend, come in. Menard, I came as soon as I could. On the telephone, you sounded troubled. What is it? Salinas, we have been cheated. Cheated? I uh, do not understand. The man who promised to give us jobs in the mill in New Jersey. You do not mean Mr. Franklin? See, si, Mr. Franklin, the man to whom we all gave $50. The man who promised us jobs for that money. The man with whom we signed that contract. Salinas, he is a cheat, this Mr. Franklin. Menard, how do you know this? I have been there today in New Jersey. You went to the mill? Mill? There is no mill, my friend. It is all untrue. No mill? No job? My $50 is gone? Yours and mine and all our friends who have come here from Puerto Rico for work. We must go to the police, Salinas. No. But this man, Franklin, must be punished. First, we will go to this man, Franklin. I know where his office is. We will get what is rightfully ours in our own way. That's quite an interesting story Menard has just told us, huh, Lewis? Sure is, Mr. Franklin. You have cheated us all. Me, Salinas, and, and the others who have come here from Puerto Rico. I want my money back, Mr. Franklin. So you want your money back, Menard. And you, Salinas? You don't feel the same way about it, eh, Salinas? See, si, he does. Tell him, Salinas. Uh, no harm will come to Menard. You promised, Mr. Franklin. Salinas! You were smart to bring him here, Salinas. I, I do not understand. You the... promise you will not harm Menard. Mr. Franklin always keeps his word. That's correct, Lewis. I'll just see that Menard gets back to Puerto Rico. With what he knows now, it'd be unwise to allow him to remain here. Salinas, you are this man's accomplice. You have helped him steal from me and your other friends. It had to be done, Menard. To take money from people who have so oh, little... Oh, it was not for the money. I am not a thief. It was for the good of our nation. Puerto Rico. Our nation, Puerto Rico? See, si, for its liberation. We must throw off the yoke of United States tyranny. Then, then you are with the nationalists. They have made you betray your friends. Oh, no, the cause... You do not understand, oh, Menard. I understand. You have been deceived by the real enemies of freedom. It is they who would impose tyranny upon us. Salinas, listen before it is too late. Salinas understands that all sacrifices must be made for the good of the cause. Is that not correct, Salinas? Yes. That'll be all, Salinas. You may leave. I cannot believe this, Salinas. All our lives, we were such friends. Louis Menard is shocked. I suppose you give him some shock treatment. Sure, Mr. Franklin. What now, Mr. Franklin? I take him down the back way and load him into the car. Okay. And Louis. Yeah, Mr. Franklin? I bring your gun with you. You'll need it. Harding's office, 
Braden, this is Harry Peters, phoning from Counter Spy Patrol Boat 41. I just received word that Mr. Harding's been trying to contact me. Yes, Mr. Harding left hurriedly for a conference at the State Department with Mr. Jordan of the Puerto Rican Affairs Division. He instructed that you meet him in his car outside the State Department building at 11. The conference will be over by then. Mr. Harding said it was an urgent matter. Got it, Braden. I'll be there. All right, Adams, first stop my house. What's it this time, Chief? Here, Peter. Read this bulletin. Came in early this morning from our New York field office. Hmm. Well, how does this concern us? Well, Juan Menard, the man who was found shot to death, is one of an undetermined number of Puerto Ricans who were taken in by a job placement racket. Only the jobs didn't exist, is that it? That's it. After my talk with the Puerto Rican Affairs Division, I'm convinced that the racket is more political than financial. You mean in view of what's been happening in Puerto Rico? Yes, Peter. We've come across all types of sabotage, espionage, enemy propaganda. This is probably the most subtle plan ever conceived of creating anti-United States feeling among Puerto Ricans. Chief, you mean these people come here from Puerto Rico with the promise of work. They're defrauded, then they go back to Puerto Rico with stories of how they were taken over by some Yankee swindlers. Yes, that's right. And Juan Menard's murder could be the strongest propaganda point of all. You can understand now, it's not just another murder case. It has overtones of insurrection attached to it. We've got a big job ahead of us. Anything specific to go on, Mr. Harding? Only a vague description of two men connected with the job placement racket. Okay, Chief, when do I pack? Now, you've got just enough time to stick a toothbrush in your pocket. We're flying to New York within half an hour. Can I do something for you? We're looking for Mrs. Juan Menard. I'm David Harding of the Counter Spies. This is Agent Harry Peters. Oh, I'm Mrs. Gladys Milford. Won't you gentlemen come in? Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Menard is out to have a drug prescription filled. It's for the youngest of the children, the baby. I take it you're here concerning her husband. Yes, that's right. Are you a friend? I suppose so, in a sense. I'm with the Welfare League. We give family counseling and aid in such neighborhoods as this. Mm -hmm. You've known the Menards for long, Mrs. Milford? Since they arrived here several months ago, I arranged for the two older children to go to day nursery. At the moment, I'm looking after the infant in the next room. Oh, I see. Well, is there anything you could tell us about Juan Menard? I knew little about Mr. Menard. We met only once. This has been a terrible blow to his wife. Yes. We're doing everything for her we possibly can. Oh, did the oh. baby cry, Mrs. Oh, uh, Maria, these men are from the counter spies. Counter spies? They want to ask you questions about your husband. About my Juan? My name is Harding. This is Mr. Peters. Uh, we won't stay long, Mrs. Menard. Just a few questions and then we'll leave. Why did they kill my Juan? He was a good man. He did not hurt anybody. Well, Mrs. Menard, do you remember your husband ever mentioning the name of the man to whom he gave money for a job? He did not tell me the name of this man. Oh, the baby, I must go to I'll her. I'll take care of her, Maria. Give me the medicine. Now, you do what you can to help Mr. Harding. Oh, gracias, Mrs. Milford. Gracias. Now, Mrs. Menard, who were the other men who gave money to this person? Please, I, I do not want to talk about it. Juan is dead. You cannot bring him back. No, Mrs. Menard, but we can bring his murderer to justice. Justice? There is no justice in this place. We should have never come. My Juan would still be alive. Mrs. Menard... Your husband was sacrificed to an evil political cause. I do not know about politics. I only know that we came here and my husband was killed. I only know that it is bad here, that the people here are bad, but that we Mr. cannot... Menard, listen to me. That's exactly what certain people want all Puerto Ricans to believe. Now, if we don't find your husband's murderer, if you don't help us, there'll be other murders... More than that, there'll be possibly a great deal of bloodshed in your homeland. Now, you wouldn't want other wives and other families to, to suffer as you have, needlessly. Would you? Would you, Mrs. Menard? No. No, I would not want that. Then who were the other men who gave money for jobs? Well, when Pedro Salinas told them about it, they all gave. Pedro Salinas? See. Si. 
Salinas and Juan have been friends for many years. Where can we get in touch with Salinas? I, I do not know where he lives. He, he was here with Juan the night that... He left the house with Juan that night, Mrs. Menard? Si. And you don't know where we can find Salinas? Oh, the, the girl he has, Lola, maybe she knows. You have her address? Oh, no, but she works at a restaurant on 110th Street. It's called the El Toro. I see. You... You will find the one who killed my Juan. We're going to try, Mrs. Menard. And we'll start looking with Pedro Salinas' girlfriend, Lola. So you're counter spies. <laughs> so what? So we'd like to ask you a few questions, Lola. Huh? About what? Your friend, Pedro Salinas. Where is he? I don't know where he is. Or where does he live? That is, when you do know where he is. He never told me. Never told you, hmm? Funny kind of a boyfriend? Yeah, funny kind. When did you see him last? Last week. Where? What's the difference? Now, don't make it rough, girlie. It's better answering questions here than in a jail cell. My place. Okay. Which is where? 106th Street, 785 East. One flight up, knocked twice. You didn't see him after that? Uh-uh. Or hear from him? Uh-uh. No phone calls, letters, postcards, anything? Uh-uh. Sure you haven't heard from him since Juan Bernard was found in that alley, shot to death. Who's uh, Juan Bernard? As if you didn't know, hmm? You two act like I'm a book of knowledge or something. Look, you got any more questions? I make my living here. The boss will get sore if he sees me wasting any more time. No, no more questions, Lola. Just a word of advice. Like what? Stay here in town where we can get in touch with you. <laughs> I ain't going anyplace. All right, come on, Peter. Lola's the Lulu of a liar, Mr. Harding. You're telling me. Could have taken her in for questioning. Well, we may do better this way. Which way? When we get out to the patrol car, radio the field office to have a stakeout put on Lola's apartment. I think that may offer us the shortest distance between us and Pedro Salinas. Hello. Mr. Franklin, this is uh, Pedro Salinas. Salinas, where have you been? Why haven't you called me since the other night? I have been hiding. After what happened to Juan Menard, I... I was afraid. Uh, I'll uh, explain that later. I want you to bring me the contract, the one you've been persuading your friends to sign. Uh, you still have it, don't you? Yes. All right, bring it to me. And uh, not at the office here. I'll be at the warehouse near Mott Street. You know where. Uh, get there as soon as you can. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> All right, Salinas, I'll take that contract now. Mr. Franklin, you promised that no harm would come to Juan Menard. He was my friend. What has become of your feelings for the cause? That should be far above personal consideration, Salinas. You promised me. It couldn't be helped. He made things difficult for Lewis. Isn't that correct, Lewis? That's right, Mr. Franklin. You lied to me, both of you. You wanted one dead. You're trying my patience, Salinas. You give me the paper with the signatures. Do like Mr. Franklin says. I do not have them. What? I did not bring them with me. Where are they, Salinas? I will not tell. Lois. Okay. Oh, my arm. My arm. I'll break oh. it off. The paper, oh, Salinas. No, 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 no. no. I will not tell. I will not. Oh. Come on. Stop. Please, please, stop, stop. I can't stand it. The paper. Oh. It's in the, in the house of, of Juan Menard. Oh. He's out on his feet. Now, Lois, we'll visit Mrs. Menard. We'll leave Salinas here. That way, Mr. Franklin? No, Lois, not that way. This way. You are listening to The Case of the Invisible Insurrectionist, 
on Counter Spy. Tonight, there's another broadcast of NBC's Sunday evening extravaganza, The Big Show. Tallulah Bankhead will preside as usual, and tonight's stars are Bob Hope, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, Louis Armstrong, Rosalind Russell, Dorothy McGuire, Frankie Lane, and Meredith Wilson with his orchestra and chorus. And Sunday over most of these NBC stations also means another visit with the mischievous Harris family. Frankie, Julius, and all their friends on the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. The chimes are your invitation every Sunday to the big show and the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Now, back to Counter Spy. New York Counter Spy Field Office, Harding speaking. Yes, I certainly do. Go ahead. Yes, I have that. Well, thank you very much. Yes, of course, I'll let you know what happens. Goodbye. Peters, order a car to be ready for us out front immediately. What's up, Chief? That was Lola. Selena's told her to call us in case of trouble. Does she know where we can locate Selena's? Yes, Peters, if we're not too late. Maria, you must try to rest. Oh, you are very kind, Mrs. Milford. There are some people here in the city of New York who are so good, like you, and some who are so bad. Were you expecting anyone? No, I didn't. Now, you but... stay right where you are. I'll see who it is. Yes, Back but... inside, lady, and not a peep out of you. Who are you? Close the door, Lewis. What is the Shut meaning? Shut your mouth, lady, and no one gets hurt. Oh, Mrs. Milford, who are these men? What do they want? I don't know, Maria. It's all very simple, ladies. Juan Menard had in his possession a paper. I want that paper, Mrs. Menard. I, I do not understand. The work contract. Contract? I, I do not know what you mean. Oh, perhaps you don't. Lewis, commence searching. Okay. This is unlawful. Isn't it? You can't expect to get away with a thing like this. But I intend to, madam. Really. Any luck, Lewis? No, not yet. Be seated, ladies. Please. Thank you. I'll just wander around myself and help Lewis. Yeah, there's not much of a view from this window, is there? Or is there? Come on, Lewis. Come on? What about the paper? A car just pulled up downstairs. Two men got out and entered this building, and they certainly don't look like tenants. Maybe cops. We'll take no chance in finding out. Let's go. I warn you, ladies, stay right where you are. Come on, come on. Let's get going. They're coming up to this floor. We're trapped. No, we can get up to the roof. Come on. Stop! Stop, you two! Stop where we fire! Coppers, Mr. Franklin. Now, this will slow them up. Uh, my arm! Keep going, Lewis. Uh, We're almost there. Uh, Keep going, Lewis. We'll make it. We'll make it. Uh, made it, Mr. Harding. They got away over the roofs. Well, their luck won't hold out, Peters. We'll get them. Plenty of blood stains on the stairs leading to the roof. One of them is hurt. He'll have to get to a doctor sometime. Oh. Everything all right here in the Menard apartment? No damage. Just woke up the baby. Mrs. Milford's inside helping Mrs. Menard. Did your men catch them, Mr. Harding? No, Mrs. Milford. This has been terribly upsetting for Maria. Yes, that poor woman's had plenty of trouble. They said they wanted a paper, a contract of some kind. Yes, we knew that from Pedro Salinas. You found Salinas? Just a few moments before he died in a warehouse. He was shot by a man named Franklin. There was also another man called Lewis. Salinas told us to get here fast. Well, did those two find the paper? I don't think so. Good. All right, Peters, you get started on that other matter while I take up where those two left off. to Harding, New York Counter-Spy Field Office. Peters to Harding. Harding, go ahead, Peters. Chief, I checked on Franklin at the address Salinas gave us. And? It was an office, but right now it's just an empty space. Whoever was there pulled out like a fast freight. Did you get any leads from anybody in the building? It was strictly a dead end, Chief. No one knows the man called Franklin or his helper, Lewis. All right, Peters. You may as well come back here to the field office. You had no luck either, hmm? I fared much better. You mean you found that contract in the Menard apartment? Yes. I sent the paper down to the lab for analysis. By the time you get back here, we should have a report on it. I... I gotta 
Get out of here, Mr. Franklin. Easy, Lewis. I... You'd be picked up in a minute if we left here. I, I, I gotta get to a doctor. My, my whole arm now is burning like it was on fire. You mustn't complain. We were lucky to find this empty barge to hide in. I, I can't stand it. Honest. You'll survive, I'm sure. Yeah. You can talk. You, you ain't got a, a slug in you. I, I don't want to die. If I, if I stay here, I'll die. Believe me, I sympathize with you. But you have the counter spies to thank for your pain, not me. Well, I'm getting to a doctor. Wait a minute. Let go! Are you crazy? You'll be caught. I'm, I'm giving up. I'll, I'll wind up in one piece that way. Get back down. Oh, my arm! You're not giving up. I'm not letting you. That, that gun ain't gonna help you, Franklin. You, you fire one shot, and coppers will be swarming all over this barn. I'm not gonna use it for firing, Lewis. I'm gonna use the butt end for another purpose. This. Here's the lab report on that paper, Mr. Harding. I was on the way in when Parker handed it to me. Did you look it over, Peter? Quickly. It's an expensive type bomb. Oh. And uh, here's a list of retailers in the city who handle it. Mm, that's quite a long list. Mm -hmm. Should I assign squads to start investigation? Yes, right away. Okay, we'll do. And Peters... Oh, wait, just a minute. Agent Braden to Harding. Braden to Harding. Come in, Braden. The body of a man who'd been shot in the right arm was found a few minutes ago by one of our harbor patrols. Hey, go ahead, Braden. It was found in an empty barge. Report indicates death was due to severe blows at the base of the head. Identification in clothing shows him to be Lewis Troy. All right, Braden. Thank you. The man called Lewis. Mm-hmm. Well, Chief, that leaves one to go. Franklin. Yes. Well, now get to work on that list of paper dealers. We'll see where that leads us. Hello. Uh, this is Franklin. I have to see you tonight. Please. I'll need money. I'd better leave the country. All right, then. The swamp over in New Jersey. All right. I'll be there at 10 tonight. So late. I thought you weren't coming. I was unavoidably detained, Franklin. You brought the money for me, Mrs. Milford? I brought exactly what you need. Franklin, you fumbled badly. You ordered me to get rid of Juan Menard. That was your idea. It wasn't my idea that his body should be found. That was Lewis' fault. It was your fault for choosing such an inefficient lieutenant. Was it Lewis's fault that you permitted that contract to get out of your hands so that you had to come to the Menard apartment while I was there? How did I know you were there? I had to act quickly. So quickly, you were almost caught by Harding. Franklin, your stupidity has put the entire cause in jeopardy. I and the others worked for months, years, to gain a solid foothold in Puerto Rico, where we could threaten the snug bourgeois safety of the United States. But I tell Be you... Be quiet. It took me years to place myself in a position in New York where I could help with the eventual overthrow of the capitalistic enemy. And you almost spoiled everything. You haven't been exposed, Mrs. Milford. You can still operate safely. Through no help of yours. You've put our schedule for the coup in Puerto Rico at least six months behind. We've waited so long, we can wait that much longer. Perhaps we can, Franklin. But you can't. Oh, what do you mean by that? You can no longer be trusted. Now, wait. I have been put in charge of this phase of our work. And it is my opinion that for the good of the cause, you should be liquidated. I, Don't move. I, but, uh, As they say, Franklin, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. Or in this case, the gun. You, you and dare. As a matter of fact, Franklin, this is the only course I dare take now. Oh, wait, please. This meeting place you chose makes it very convenient for me. And for me, too, Mrs. Milton. Harding. Drop that gun. Stand where you are, Franklin. I'm not moving. How did you get here? Simple. We followed you, Mrs. Milford. Followed me? Through that contract paper. We thought the tracing of that type paper would lead us to Franklin, but it led us straight to your phony charity front. And on the way out in the car, my agents radioed me that they found some very interesting case histories in your files. 
with names and addresses of people here and in Puerto Rico involved in this plot. Had a nice setup, didn't you, Mrs. Milford? Passing yourself off as a welfare worker in a Puerto Rican district in New York. You were a welfare worker, all right. The welfare of the enemies of this country in Puerto Rico. Take them away, Peters. It gives me great pleasure to introduce a statement to Counterspy from the man who probably knows as much as anyone in the United States about the Puerto Rican people and their welfare problems here. The Honorable Raymond M. Hilliard, Commissioner of Welfare, City of New York. Here is Commissioner Hilliard's statement. Today's Counterspy story has its basis in actual fact. I can well believe that many Puerto Ricans living here have been the victims of cruel and crooked exploitation. And I am convinced that communist saboteurs have deliberately stirred up trouble and have tried to wreck the unity of the citizens of this city and of the nation. I know that there was a time when communists had achieved a strong hold among those engaged in welfare work in this city. But it has been my task during the past two and a half years to break their power, to throw out the communists, and to return welfare work to its proper place as an instrument of lawful government. We have found the Puerto Rican residents of New York City a decent and friendly people who hold that this government is their government. We are proud of them, and we know that they will not be deceived by those who would try to destroy us. Thank you, Commissioner Hilliard. Tune in every week, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next week for the exciting Case of the Pretty Plant. A gracious guest brings her hospitable hostess a most unusual gift, and your counter-spies are started on their way to the breaking up of an international spy ring. How a drugstore led to the disaster when treason had the fragrance of hyacinth will be revealed for the first time next week in Case of the Pretty Plant on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program, originated in New York, was directed by Marx B. Loeb, dramatized by Edward J. Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. Lionel Rico speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Want to know who's on the big show tonight? Bob Hope, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, Rosalind Russell, Frankie Lane, Dorothy McGuire, Louis Armstrong, Meredith Wilson, and the glamorous and predictable Tallulah. No wonder it's the big show. And Sunday evening also means another outstanding production by Theater Guild on the Air. Tonight, it's Boomerang starring Kirk Douglas. Join Tallulah and her wonderful guests on the big show later on NBC.